All right. <clears throat> so now, we're at the right template. And you can see it says drawn by and it says administrator. This I was lazy when I made the parts. I didn't change it. So I'm going to go to just open. Now I'm going to just right click on that part and go to high properties. Summary. Oh. Change that. Hit OK. Go on that one. High properties. Okay. And then I'm just going to cancel that. And it did save. Right? Update it. Nothing changes. It still says administrator. See that? It didn't change when I changed the part. What you have to do is you have to close the drawing and then reopen the drawing. And now it shows. So now you change the I properties that are going to go into the drawing. You have to close and reopen the drawing. Okay? And then all your changes show up. Change it there also. If I look at definitions, so I have the author, the title, the part number, all coming from the from the model. Also, if you look here, I have one called material, and I've, I've have it going from the subject field because in the I properties there's no field called material. But there is one called subject, so I'm using that field. Well, so, take it from the physical property? No. It, it's stupid like that. But sometimes you don't want it to, you want it to say, have your, well, you put in the, the drawing, not exactly what it is there. You want to do some abbre abbreviations or something, or, or you want to talk about finish or something like that. So that way you can type it in yourself. So like on, on that on the portfolio project, I've just had short descriptions for them. Um, but sometimes you might want to make it other than what's just on that list, because the the list of materials properties is they're real long names. But here we only have that much space to work with. You can see I've also filled in the title block in, for the block tolerances for it. So, if I look down here at the scale, one to one, double check that, one to one. And the scale, there's no way to make that update automatically. So you have to check it, and I'll show you how to change it. So on the next sheet, let's know what scale that is. So if I double click here, two to one. So if I click on the little plus, and then I go to the title block here, and then the field text, double, double click on that. This is showing you what fields it's using. And at the bottom, there's one called scale. So now I just put two to one. Okay, and it fills it in for me. Okay. Questions? Is that Spence or Spencer? You guys use Inventor, right? Or you use Solver? Is that how you guys do the scale and drawings? Not usually. Not usually? How do you guys do it? Somebody figures it out on ours. I want to see your template then. I haven't, I haven't figured out how to get to automatically do it. Oh. Because it depends on which views you put in. Can you check that? Can you check, go check that at a different edit definition and check what that what that field is? I'm gonna have to Okay. Yeah, let's look at, at that later. If we can do it automatically, that's better. Um, <clears throat> all right. So that's put in drawings and the new title block. Um, the next thing is what do we need on this? Dimensions. Dimensions, right? <clears throat> so we can go to annotate. Start adding dimensions here, but didn't we already do a lot of that? 
when I made the part. So if I right click on a view and retrieve dimensions, I just select the view, select, hit select dimensions. Actually, there's nothing really on this view that I can do because I didn't draw anything on this plane. So it doesn't want to let me do it. So in this case, I won't do it. But if I right click on this one, retrieve dimensions, hit select dimensions, look at all the ones I can get. Because the way I did this part is I drew it from this view, extruded it, and just drew a line from the corner to the corner. So there are no dimensions on the front view. In this, but in this view, yeah, I've got a lot. I can pick that one, and that one, and that one. I'm not going to pick the diameter of the hole because I want to put it in a hole note. Actually, on this one, it's just a straight hole. So yeah, I'll just take that. And I'll take that. Okay. Now I can just kind of move them outside. And now I can make them look nice. Grab on the dot to move the radius. What about the placement of the big hole? What? What about the placement of the big hole? Uh, what about the placement of that hole? I'm going to go to center line. Click there. Click there. To create. And I'll do a center mark on that. And a center mark on that. Just delete that big one out. I'll just grab that hole in. So this one, the center line here, <clears throat> will draw a center line between two points you pick. That's a center mark for just a hole. That's the center line you pick the two edges, it'll put it between the two edges. And this one will put it, so like if you have a bolt hole circle, you can put it in center marks for the whole bolt hole, with the whole bolt circle, and they'll, they'll point to the middle and everything like it's supposed to. This view, do I really need this view? No. No. I'm just going to get rid of it. So this one, because I didn't have any dimensions I could retrieve for it, I'm just going to put in some, some of my own. <clears throat> what if I want to change the number of decimal places? I'm just going to right click on it. Precision. Tell any places. Questions? Alright. So go to this one. On these holes, I try and retrieve it. Is that just a diameter 38 hole? No. What? No, it's got a counter bore and it's got a thread on it. So I don't want to just use that. What I want to do is I want to do the hole and thread note. I can pick on that thread, and it gives me the whole note. That's, cool. That's why we use the whole command. If you did that as separate extrusions, you wouldn't get this. <coughs> and SolidWorks will not make a hole like that for you. You cannot make a hole like that in SolidWorks. I was doing the training this weekend, and I tried to have them do a hole like that with a counterbore with a thread in it. Wouldn't do it. There's no way in the, in the whole command to make it do both. You do a counterbore or a thread, but not both. So that's one of the little, one of the few things that Inventor has over SolidWorks. Now in SolidWorks, could you do? You'd have to do an extrusion, and then, or you do a, a, a hole that's the bigger diameter, and then a hole that's the smaller diameter. But it was two steps, no matter what you did. So I can do this one too. So there it didn't give me the depth of the hole, right? It didn't give me the depth of the hole here either, right? So what I want to do is I want to go to that. I still will click on it. Now I'm just going to tell it to give me the depth symbol and the thread depth value.
Oh, symbol here. So I'll tell it to give me the, the depth symbol and the whole depth. Is it okay? There you go. Same thing there. Depth, whole depth, so it's bottom depth, bottom half. So I get that, that depth of the hole. Okay? Questions? You want to use the chamfer one, you pick the edge, and then you pick another edge next to it, and it measures it. Say chamfer, we just want the numbers. And what was that? And then you just type it in you know, times four, so. Yeah, so you just you either do 4x or you do typical whatever. But also, you can see here, you can change it to being instead of the distance. And the angle, the distance, and distance. So you can, you can put that in based on. Questions on the drawing stuff? <clears throat> so the practice for this week is to go back to all those other practices you've done and make drawings of them. Make the appropriate drawings for it. So if it needs an auxiliary, do an auxiliary. Um, put whatever dimensions you need on it. So practice creating views, adding dimensions, and everything. Okay? But we can use the same template that you had on the Yeah. Just copy the template from the 4C into your projects, and then open that and start working on it. Any questions? Okay. How yep. did you do that angle one again? Get the, uh, the chamfer. The chamfer. You right clicked it. I went chamfer. And oh, it tells me chamfer. to select the chamfer edge. So I picked the chamfer edge. And I picked a reference edge. And told it where to go. Also, when you have it like this, the dot here moves the text. The dot here lets you flip what side it's on. So the dot at the end of the leader lets you flip sides. The dot on the corner lets you move where it's positioned. Also, you might run into times when, like that, it won't let you put that 0.5 inside. So just right click on it, options, take the arrows inside off. And that'll put the text inside. Questions? All right.